Okay, so it's about time that we got into some math. Uh, there's a significant amount of math in chemistry, and um, it's best that we introduce it early so that we can get some practice with it when we really need it to solve chemistry problems. There's a certain way of doing calculations that pops up a lot in chemistry that's called dimensional analysis. And uh, it's really just a way of multiplying fractions to make sure that you get the right numerical answer, the right number, and uh, the right units to go along with that number. And so for this lesson, what we're going to do by the end of it is you should be able to use this method to solve problems, uh, answer questions, convert measurements into different units. To start off with, what I'd like to do is just review a few basic concepts uh, about fractions because dimensional analysis uses the multiplication of fractions in order to get its answers. So the first thing that we're going to talk about here is multiplying and dividing by one. Um, let's start with multiplying by one. If you take a number and you multiply that number by one, you're always going to get the same number. But uh, multiplying by one doesn't just work with numbers. You can use variables, like if you took x and you multiplied that by one, you'd get x. And it also works with units. So if you took a unit that you measure something in, like grams, and you multiply that by one, you get the same unit. So the idea here is that anytime you multiply anything by one, you always get the same thing, whatever that thing is. The next idea is dividing by one. So if you divide a number by one, you get the same number. So it's, it's like multiplying by one. And by the way, in case this is a surprise to you, when, when you write a fraction, what you're basically saying is to divide. So when you write a fraction like 5 over 1, you're saying 5 divided by 1. And anything anything divided by 1 is itself. So that, again, it works with variables like x. x divided by 1 would be x. Or y divided by 1 would be y. And it works with units. So grams divided by 1, hey, guess what? It's grams. The next idea is that whenever you divide something by itself, so if you have a number and you divide that number by itself, you always get 1. And so that's true of variables. If x divided by x, that equals 1. And again, it's true of units. So grams divided by grams equals 1. So if we keep these three basic arithmetic ideas in mind, it's going to help us to understand how dimensional analysis works so that we get the right answer and the right number. So to kind of put some of this stuff together, let's say um, I was trying to multiply 10x over 2 by 2 over 5x. Now, when you have two fractions, like we've got here that you're multiplying, you can actually write that as one big fraction. So I can write that as 10x times 2 over 2 times 5x. And see, all I've done there is I've taken the, the two separate fractions that I'm multiplying together, and I've actually written them as one big fraction with the, the two things that are being multiplied on the top and the two things that are being multiplied on the bottom. And now that we've got one big fraction, you should start to see some of our ideas from the top at work. For example, look at this rule right here. If something is the same on the top and the bottom of a fraction, whatever that thing is, then it equals 1. So already you should be able to see that we have a few things that are the same on the top and bottom of our fraction. So because x is on the top and the bottom, it becomes 1. So basically you have 10 times 2 divided by 2 times 5. And then what happened to those x's again? 
Oh, because they were the same on the top and the bottom, it becomes a 1, so times 1. But that's not the only thing that's the same on the top and the bottom. If you look right here, the 2's are the same, right? So now it becomes 10 divided by 5, and then we had the times 1 from the x over x, and then we've got the times 1 from the 2 over 2. All right. At this point, we can go ahead and just divide our fraction out. And um, 10 divided by 5, both of those you can divide the top and the bottom by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 5 divided by 5 is 1. So 10 divided by 2 is, or, but, I'm sorry, 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 5 divided by 5 is 1. And then we've got the silly time 1s that we're still hanging on to. And then now this rule comes into play. The second rule that we talked about up here, anything divided by 1 is itself. So now I'm going to I'm going to jump I'm going to jump down here back to where we started. So now we've got 2 divided we've got 2 divided by 1 and anything divided by 1 is itself. So now we've got 2 because 2 divided by 1 is just 2 and we have the 2 times 1s from the two things that were the same in the top and the bottom. And now look at the top at that first rule. Anything times 1 is itself. So 2 times 1 is 2 itself, and 2 times 1 is 2 itself. So we started with two fractions that we multiplied together, had x's in there and weird stuff in there, and it turns out that the answer from all of that gobbledygook is just a simple 2. And we found that answer by following these rules. So that's just a brief refresher of how multiplying fractions work and some of the interesting things that can happen when you multiply fractions together. Now we need to talk about what that means for chemistry. So I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. We can scroll back up and refer to those rules if we have to. Okay. Uh, a lot of times in chemistry, you'll get a measurement in one unit and it has to be in another. So let's say that um, I had a measurement in milliliters. Let's say it was one point two milliliters. But for whatever whatever I'm doing, whatever I need this measurement for, instead of being in milliliters, I need it in liters. So what I've got here now is I've got to do a conversion. I have to convert this measurement that's in milliliters into liters. And to do that conversion, I can use what's called dimensional analysis, which is basically where you're just going to be multiplying fractions together to try to get the number and the unit that you need. So how we set up dimensional analysis is by using, um, I've had a professor call it fences before, but it's, it's basically you've got like this little grid you make out of two lines. And what that is saying is that you've got a fraction multiplied by a fraction. And instead of just putting the dot in between the two fractions, uh, it's customary to just draw a vertical line betwe between the two fractions. And dimensional analysis problems always start with this setup, and you can always put the same things in here to start with. Now, some dimensional analysis problems later in the course will be a little bit more complicated, but for this one, we're just going to keep it really simple. So in the top right of this little figure, on the top right of our fractions that we're multiplying together, you're always going to put what you know. So up here you're going to put whatever you know from the measurement or the math problem that you were given. What you know always goes on the top left. And then depending on the units that what you know are in, there might be um, a unit from it on the bottom. Um, but for now, we're just going to say that a 1 is going to go on the bottom right there. And then here's where it gets kind of, you have to think, you have to start thinking a little bit. On the bottom right of this little figure, or in the bottom of the second fraction that we're multiplying together, you have to put the same unit that you started with. The same unit. Now, when we say unit, um, what I'm talking about is, is what 
what we're measuring in. So what we started with measuring in were milliliters, and we have to keep that same unit down here on the bottom. And then on the top of the second fraction, on the top right of our diagram, you put the unit that you want to be measured in. Whatever you want your final answer to be measured in, that unit goes on the top. So this is basically how you start setting up dimensional analysis. You've got two fractions, and you, we use this little crosshatch figure to show it, and you always put the same thing in here. What you know goes in the top left, the same unit that you know goes in the bottom right, and then the unit that you want goes on the top right. So for our problem, it would look like this. We'd have our dimensional analysis, little grid, and in the top left we'd put what you know, and what we know from this example is 1.2 milliliters. So I'd put 1.2 milliliters. Now remember, that's the top of a fraction that we're going to multiply. It's, it's the top of the first fraction. On the bottom we're going to put 1. Now on the bottom of the second fraction over here, I need the same unit that I started with. Well, the unit that I started with in this problem is milliliters. So I'm going to put that same unit down here. And then on the top of that second fraction, I put the unit that I want. Well, for this problem, the unit that I want is liters. So I'm going to put liters up here. Now, we're not ready to actually do any math yet because we still have the second fraction is still basically blank. We've got the units in there, but we don't know what the numbers are. So what you have to do is you have to fill in this fraction and create what's called a conversion factor. And a conversion factor basically is a mathematical relationship between um, two things. So we have to know how liters and milliliters are related. Now if you don't know that, you can look it up in your planner or you can look it up online. I've been doing this for a long time, so I know that one liter is 1,000 milliliters. And so now we're just multiplying two fractions together. We're multiplying 1.2 milliliters over 1 by 1 liter over 1,000 milliliters. We're going to multiply those together. And so let's see what happens when we do that. We might have some of our rules coming back into play. So you've got the 1.2 milliliters. Got it over a 1. You've got the 1 liter. And then you have the 1,000 milliliters. So let's look for things, let's let's look at some of our rules back up here at the top. Let's look for things uh, that are the same on the top and the bottom because they turn into one and basically that's that cancels out. So if you look, um, I can see really quickly that milliliters is on the top and milliliters is on the bottom and because they're the same they basically become one and they cancel out. And now we've got uh, 1.2, and we've got liters, and then we've got 1,000 on the bottom of this fraction down here. And I've got a 1 here and a 1 here. So if I start to multiply that now, what I'm going to end up with is 1.2 liters, because 1.2 times 1 is 1 1.2, and then liters. And then 1 times 1,000 is 1,000 and then no unit because the milliliters canceled out. So what this is telling me is I have to divide 1.2 liters by 1,000. And so if I divide 1.2 liters by 1,000, uh, I just move the decimal one, two, three spots this way because there's three zeros in 1,000, and I get 0 0.0012 liters. And so what I've figured out here is that 1.2 milliliters is equal to 0 0.0012 liters. Now these two amounts are the same. These are equal to each other. It's just that over here it's measured in liters where it started out being measured in milliliters. So those are the basics of dimensional analysis. We're going to be doing this a lot in class, so make sure you understand how this works. If you need more help with it, you can always see me or seek out some more resources uh, in Moodle or elsewhere online.